I would just like to ask you, from your perspective, what is in Indigenous Aboriginal education, from your perspective? There's a lot to the Aboriginal education. Uh, I do not use the word Indigenous because nobody asked me whether I wanted my, uh, my person changed again. It's been changed ten times in my lifetime. And so I'm Cree and I'm uh, Aboriginal, but I would prefer to call myself First Peoples. Uh, First Peoples education is the life, your lifestyle, your experiences, and also of who you are, and also going to our, our old people's teachings, like the old, the old way and bringing it forward. Because within that, uh, what our grandfathers experienced Every one of those have a teaching, and that it can be brought forward to teach even the youngest ones. Uh, we touched a little bit about the little child that wasn't um, grounded, and that was an experience that I had as a young mom, and an experience from my mom, from her grandma, of how we had to ground our children. And that's not being done with our children. And the other one, too, is another uh, grandfather, oh, our great-great-grandfathers and our forefathers have taught us, is even the umbilical cord of what is that being done and how are they being treated. And a lot of them end up in the dump. And it's mm. almost throwing the spirit away of our children, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I teach all that. of, of And even <clears throat> our traditions of when we have a loss in our family, and those are some of the things that has gone, uh, been thrown aside. It's not practiced anymore. And I believe a lot of that has to also do with the residential school. But today, I do teach, teach what I've, I've been taught by my grandparents and my parents, and also the elders that I had the opportunity of, of studying with across Canada, which mm -hmm. I did that for six years. And I traveled right from... Um, uh, Halifax down to Vancouver, B.C., and the first elder I studied with uh, was uh, Albert Albert Lightning from mm -hmm. Hobima, and then Chief Snow from the Blackfoot Nation, and then also uh, uh, Robert Redcalf, who was an elder also, from the uh, uh, San Chilochis. Uh -huh. And so from there, I went to Halifax and studied with Ernie Benedict, who is an elder in uh, Nova Scotia, and then right across uh, to the territories uh, with Tom Eagle, and then in Vancouver with Chief Dan George's son, Bob George. And in that lifetime, I also sat with my own, my own elders and also el other elders throughout the past 30, 30 40 years. Okay. You know? And every one of them have said that our children need to learn about our old ways because they're still there. They didn't, they didn't get buried away. They're not gone. And following that tradition, following those teachings, it's amazing how they help uh, adults, help children understand who they are and where they belong. I teach in numerous schools. I work with adults, elders, children and I teach everything from drumming I teach the medicines uh, I do the smudging and we do the sweat lodge and we also do the dance and mm -hmm. I do the the First Nations and the Métis Jig I teach the Métis oh. Jig also and also the fire the fire ceremonies and also I take many many people out into the bush and rivers and creeks to pick <laughs> medicines and I grow a lot in my backyard here I have trees I have plants I have mm -hmm. sage growing I have plantain and raspberries saskatoons mm -hmm. and apple trees and choke cherries and a wide range wide range and plus I grow others too the thing is like it's it's there it's all there Mm -hmm. And we can go as natural as possible to go out and get our own medicines. And so it's teaching, teaching that so it doesn't get lost. I teach the language, and I open, I open my, my, my teachings is not just to the Aboriginal people mm -hmm. or First Peoples. And <clears throat> it's open to everyone, mm -hmm. and everyone is treated the same in the classrooms. 
I do my teachings in a circle. And it's amazing how the children respond a lot better than in the desk because this way everyone is involved in the circle. Not one person is left out of not asking a question or even responding to a question. And because so many of our people are, are shy. And mm -hmm. if I ask a question, I notice that they don't put their hands up or anything. They'll look at me and they'll smile, and I know they yeah. know. And so I thought, you know, teaching with the desks just didn't work. So I asked, I told the principal, you know, that you want me to, you're asking me to come and teach Aboriginal culture. I don't teach crafts. I teach Aboriginal culture. If I have an individual and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, and then we will make something. We, I teach a random of, of uh, Aboriginal crafts and paintings, mm -hmm. and and uh, and at the same time though it's a teaching. They don't make. I'm not a. a they will make dream catchers if they want one, but making a dream catcher is not just a dream catcher. It is rites of passage of how, where they originated and why, and the purpose of it. It's not just to catch bad dreams and, you yeah, know, and so more. there's many things in there that there's an involvement, right. you know, and then yet you can go up to a store and you buy it, and that's yeah. not right. And also many of our sacred objects, I don't teach them how to make the sacred objects, but I teach them how to play the drum and the fan and, you know, and the pipe, you know, and uh, also the rattle, you know, those are sacred objects. It's mm -hmm. not something that people can just attend a workshop and make a drum or make a rattle because those are sacred objects to us because I remember when my, my first son was born and uh, I saw my dad, you know, with the ceremonies and stuff and he'd have a rattle. The traditional rattle but I was at Hudson Bay and I uh, walked in and I saw this little beautiful little blue rattle for a baby so I bought it and I uh, bought it for my son and my son's playing it in the house and my dad comes home and I was visiting my dad and mom and dad and then here uh, dad hears us who brought that rattle in here and I said I did I bought it for, for uh, my son and he takes it he throws it in the fire and he said, that thing, he says, you never know what a child can bring into the house, a oh good spirit or a bad spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I had my teaching and my, his dad, my Muslim and my dad, and they sat down and talked to us about the sacredness of a rattle. Mm -hmm. So there's many things, you know, mm -hmm. that people today abuse. Because you look around my house, do you see any drums or things hanging around? No. Or I, eagle feathers? I that, yeah. No, because it's they're sacred clear. to us. It's clear. You, Because the thing is, like, people walk through my house, and I never know what their spirit is like, and it could attach it to the drum or to the eagle feather yeah. or something. And not only that, but then <clears throat> if I turn around and someone, I go to play the drum, then that spirit hits that it's person. Clear. Because that I don't know what that other person right. came out. Mm -hmm. I, I I smudge it and stuff, but still, it I protect it. It's wrapped up in a cloth. Maybe. Yeah. Would it be fair to say what I hear you saying is education cannot indigenous education cannot just be considered things. That's right. Crafts. That's right. It's not. There's crafts. so many more levels. Mm -hmm. There's many. And you need to determine or you decide who's privy to that information mm -hmm. as they go along. You yep. share when you feel it's ready or time. Yes, because That's when I work I with the when I work with the kids, I don't have I don't have a schedule that says today we're going to learn about drumming. Today we're going to learn you know yeah. even the language. So it, I look at the kids, and then I say okay, okay we're going to do drumming today, mm -hmm. and the kids are all excited. But they're also taught how to handle the drum and to warm up the drum, put the essence in that drum, mm -hmm. and also the songs you're going to sing, and also the teachings of the the drum, you know, is the heartbeat, and how uh, many of them, they take the drum and they just start whacking it. And I said, is that how you treat your mother? <laughs> you know, uh, that's, or there's oh, violence I... against women. 
And I said, if you hit that drum that hard again, I got to take it away from you. I said, because I don't allow violence to women. And they're looking at me. Wow. I says, well, that's, that's, that's who we look at. You know, where does a child hear that first heartbeat, that drum mm -hmm. is in the woman, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and that tells me many stories of uh, when I'm working with adult men. And they take the drum and they just whack it. And then I find out later on, and that, oh yeah, he beats up women. He had these girls and he beats them up. Mm -hmm. He even hits his mom. And I'm going, ooh, the drum just told on him. And those things, but even through there, I'll just say, okay, what are you guys learning in social today? Mm -hmm. Well, we're learning about residential school. Okay, then I share my life in residential school. Mm -hmm. then, I sh then I tell them about what other people have studied mm -hmm. and of course while I'm at uh, in the school is actually giving me a classroom mm -hmm. so I brought in a lot of my information there right. and so I can pull that out and then we get to look at it and mm -hmm. uh, and like the little kids I have videos of the stories of how the rabbit yeah. turns why the rabbit turns white in the winter and stuff like right. that eh? and so but these are things that it also teaches them the values because I know that uh, we have the TP teachings and we have the seven sacred teachings yeah. and we have the circle of courage, you know, but you can go, you can, I, what I do is I take all of that together. And then, then if someone says, well, because right now the biggest thing in kids in foster care is religion, mm -hmm. you know, well, I don't want my child to learn because we are this religion, we're that religion, we're Mennonites, or we're mm -hmm. Christians, we're born again. And I don't want my, you know, I don't want my child to learn about his culture. You know, I'm going, well, what do you mean culture? They don't realize, they think culture is religion. Mm -hmm. It's all spirituality, it's all, it's all sweat lodge and sun dance and, uh -huh. you know, yeah. and I have to break it down to them, you know. And there's language, there's their foods, and there's our, our dancing, history. our history. I right. said, don't the Ukrainians have a dance? Mm -hmm. Don't the Russians have a dance? You yeah. know, yeah. don't the Scottish have the bagpipes? That's their culture. Well, whatever it is you guys do, we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and so the kids then, I, uh, I'm open with them and I share what it is that they're learning at the time right. at, at school, in class. And it's amazing how some children will uh, they'll ask, they're open to ask. Right. And I always encourage them to ask. And this is from, I believe that if, a, if there's a person in their child that's there and is, wants to know something, but they're hesitant, they're, they're shy, or they're going to think I don't know anything. But there's always someone that will think of that question and ask and uh -huh. you could see I could see this little little child go oh, uh -huh. and then they're listening you know and they'll say well how come you know and so then I you know I'll explain it and then the little kid is like sits back and I'm going ah oh, that's what I wanted to know yeah you know and so I keep my my way of teaching is keeping them involved by asking questions, not, but I never ask them questions of their life. What what kind of life are they leading right now? Because that is not what I'm hired mm -hmm. to do. I get these children or the people that come to me. They come to me because they're going through a problem. Even from dreams to sweat lodge to uh, I have to take, I have to go, I'm going to a powwow. Where can I go? What is an elder? Mm -hmm. You know, what is considered an elder? Yeah. So how come this is this and this, you know? So I share questions. that with them. So part of, one of the important things is, is for P individuals, students, is to learn who are they. I had the opportunity of going to Beaver Lodge and they're having uh, Heritage Day. And every child, not every child, but there was a room for the gymnasium had all the children that participated, well, I guess not all of them, but the majority of them, all had, came in with their 
there was a Irishman, Scottish, of all their mm -hmm. cultures. Yeah. And they had the family involved, and they brought their little artifacts in there. Yeah. There was a Métis, and it was a First Nation. They had all the moccasins yeah. and stuff like that. And they were, and I guess they had did some beading, and and there was other cultures. And then we just walked around and looked, and all these children knew, you know, their culture. And they were so proud to talk about their culture. And, you know, that's yeah. the only school I've seen do that. Really? I haven't seen any other school, and I've been wow. after them to do And I think they should it throughout every school. Absolutely. Because so. today we have so many grandparents are melting pot of cultures. Because mm -hmm. we have their um, Syrians and uh, yeah. you know the black race, we have the Asians and the Caucasians and the uh, okay. even uh, mixed Aboriginal people are here. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. they think that you see one Aboriginal, you've seen them all. No, <laughs> and I explained to the children over and over, even the students. I said, you know, uh, there was eighteen dialects in Alberta, Cree, yeah. and then not only that, but there's different tribes. I said, yeah. I I don't understand what a Blackfoot is saying. Yeah, absolutely, it's completely yeah. different. Different, totally language. different language. It's yeah. a different language. Yeah, and even their foods are cooked a little different than ours. Yeah, well, you know, even this tobacco mm -hmm. that was been prepared was Linda Manigan's Blackfoot mm -hmm. woman. Yeah. In their way, mm -hmm. it's been with uh, buffalo fat rendered. Oh, It's a little yeah. different. I was yeah. going to yeah. explain, but I'm sorry. I got That's things okay. off That's on okay. a crazy track. That's awesome. It's a little bit different, and I learned... Is, but I told her, I'm going to have to tell people if they yeah. notice, why is it different? And well, she you're said, not supposed to open it. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, well, you're not supposed so to. you'll know yeah. that it was in the oven, it's homegrown tobacco, and it's yeah, been rendered right with buffalo fat. And I said, that's completely different than we do it up north. And yeah. So you know, so yeah, language, everything's yeah, yeah. very different. Yeah, I grow tobacco back here too. Aren't they beautiful, hey? Have you ever seen them? Once. Um, we grew a plant in Calgary, and it yeah. was so big, it was like a person. Huge! I felt like there were people just like this yeah, in the backyard. Yeah, it grew right up, up to my deck here. Oh my gosh. All the way down was like over eight feet tall, yeah. and huge leaves. Yeah, huge. massive. Mm -hmm. So it's very true. Yeah. What What is your vision for Indigenous education in the next 10 years? What would you like to I see? I would like to see an elder or someone that knows their culture very very well and to teach to have a classroom like I have in the schools right now mm -hmm. and to teach that and to have <clears throat> not just a half an hour here 15 minutes here like I went to an elders uh, elders conference and some of the elders that were there said oh yeah they bring me in just to come in 20 minutes or half an hour and that's it and I said no I said you should have one classroom that they come in per se per whatever yeah. uh, study block. Yeah, time. Yeah, 40 minutes, and then another class comes in 40 minutes, another class comes in. The next week you come in, you know, it, whether it's there for once a week, all mm -hmm. day, yeah. or every morning, Monday to Friday. Right. Or Monday to Thursday, because sometimes, right. well, they used to have Friday off, now they don't. Yeah, so consistent. But, so everyone time. gets to learn it. Right. You know, and if they think, why should they have it only for Aboriginal people? Well, if you if you want, get the other cultures in there too. Yeah. You know, you but but I think because this is first people's country, then they should get to know about us. I would love to learn about other cultures. Mm -hmm. You know what I did in Red Deer? I, I moved from Red Deer and they um, I worked for uh, Alberta Gas Ethylene. Uh -huh. And I don't know how it worked, but all my friends that we hung around together yeah. were all different ethnics. And there was 12 of us. Been everything. <laughs> and once a month, we would go to either Edmonton or Calgary, and we'd go to a, a play or something and then go to a restaurant. But it was always a different ethnic restaurant. Mm -hmm. And once a month, we would cook our cultural food. But we took turns. So I had a Scottish, I had a German, I had an Armenian, and English, Cree, but every and Japanese and uh, Chinese, mm -hmm. and they all cooked their food, everything. Right. And then we, and then they, we made little uh, little pamphlets and stuff, and we taught them about our culture. And everybody, you know, as uh, there was so much food in there that I didn't know, you know, who made baklava, and the German food, and uh, I got to taste was a little bit of it. 
the Scottish haggis. <laughs> oh, you know. We'll hear about the haggis. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> was it. <laughs> I will respect them. <laughs> but the thing is, though, it gave me a better understanding. You know, it's not just like we just worked together for like eight, nine years and best right. of buddies and we went to, you know, operas uh-huh. and concerts and stuff, eh? But once a month, we got to learn about each other. Really personal. Very. In depth. Yeah. And everything from the Japanese, he was a single guy. So I, I, I helped him. We went shopping in Calgary, came all the way back to Red Deer and cooked at my house. Right. And then we uh, took the legs off the table and we extended oh. it. And then we uh, put like books <clears throat> and then yeah. we all sat with cushions. And not only that, but he went and got a whole bunch of dishes. He bought some and he also rented some of the Japanese dishes, everything. And then we uh, rolled the rice and all, yeah. everything. And so then we really sat there engaged. and we ate. And I learned as, as he was cooking, well, I was helping him, so he had to show me how. And well, how could you? How do you do this one? How, you know, and then also when I was cooking my stuff, and then they all had they could come and help if they wanted. Right. And I remember this one guy says, "And I don't want no innards," you know. <laughs> and so I had moose, I had roast, and uh, tripe, and moose nose and a tongue, uh-huh. and uh, and then I had uh, uh, salmon. And I had some dry meat and all the different vegetables, mm-hmm. you know, how we cooked them. Yeah. And so everybody just raw rawed about, and he says, there better be no innards here, you know. He's just eating away. <laughs> Still and, on the innards. <laughs> and then after we were done, and uh, so I put everything in Cree. And then I didn't put in, they had to learn how to say them in say Cree. And then, and then I uh, told them after what it was. And then when he found out that he just had moose nose, nose and he had a tongue and he had the tripe and, you know, I did have some liver. He did recognize yeah, the liver, liver, you know, but it was just like small amounts, you know, because mm-hmm. there was 12 of us, yeah. you know. But it was, uh, and he just was trying to make himself throw up. I said, but it was good. Yeah, it was good, you know. So you must have walked away from that with a much better understanding of their culture. I who did. Who they were did. and vice versa. And that's what I am. That's I really what. encourage uh, people to, mm-hmm. whoever the show, you know, when they go out into the world, is get to know them. Not just that I work with them or this is my, you know, we work mm-hmm. together. But who are they? Yeah. You know, and I think that would make a better world. And for education, because it makes good sense. To- and not only that, but it's in our medicine wheel. Because mm-hmm. if you have the red race, yellow race, black race, and white race. And if you're prejudiced to to one race, you're prejudiced to everyone. And so you have to get to know everyone. So, you know, understand. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that is one of the things I teach the children, even adults, you know, and about, I ask them, first of all, I says, so where do you belong? Mm-hmm. They look at me like I'm weird. So I have to explain <laughs> to them. And they go, yeah, well, uh, I know my grandpa was uh, was Dutch. So, so how much do you know about Dutch? You know, yeah. so just, and then they turn around next time I see them and they've done research. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. or they'll text me and then they're all happy. And, and they said, you know, I can understand the children learning, wanting to know who they are. You know, maybe they're babies, but that gene is there. It's there. Yeah, it didn't yeah. die. It's still, it passed on through generation, mm-hmm. you know. So they need to know who they are. That's yes. And everything I hear everything. you saying, that yep. it all comes down to that. Because that gives you that part of that security and that belonging. And also from there, um, there's so many stories. Like I went to in BC of uh, a youth conference in Prince George. And it was a young man who shared his story of being raised by his mom. And then she ended up... Uh, putting him in foster care and then she passed away and and he had a rough rough life and then he aged out lived on the streets and mm-hmm. and met a girl and they had a baby and and uh, they broke up and I loved the baby but the baby wasn't his and just devastated mm-hmm. him then he walked in and he heard some music down the street this is down in Vancouver 
And so he stood outside and listened, and it was warm, but the door was open, eh? And so he's, and then the next week he went there again, and finally he got a little closer, a little closer, finally he went in. And then they welcomed, wel welcomed him in, and then he started participating. And then from there he, uh, he met another girl, and they had a baby, and so I made sure this was mine. And then, but in his heart, he wanted to find his family, and he was from Saskatchewan. And so he decided to go on a walk. And he saved up some money, and he started walking across from Vancouver all the way lower Alberta, BC, Alberta, wow. and then Saskatchewan. They lived way up north. And it, it, it and then along the way, he, uh, he sent his wife and the baby back home. And he kept on going, and he would stay in reserves, and and they would he would share his story, and they'd help him, and he the way he'd go again, and he'd go to uh, native organizations, and he said, yeah, some some places I was uh, turned out, you know, he turned out, you know, because he looked he didn't look native, and they thought he was just a guy that's trying to get a handout or something and give some with phony story, yeah. and and so he uh, ended up wow. he ended up back on the reserve. And uh, and I guess he he thought because he had told him he was coming, he had he knew who his grandfather was, and so I guess he he entered he showed up and he went to the band office nobody yay you made it you know hmm. he didn't get that response he thought he would get, and then he uh, I guess he went and camped uh, out soft off the reserve along a creek you know a, a mm -hmm. creek or river anyway by a water anyway. And uh, so I guess he had some people visit, and then they just check him out and stuff. And then, uh, and then finally, this one guy came out and said, told him to leave. He said, "These are my, these are my people." I said, "I control them." He was a drug dealer. And so um, he said, "No." He said, "I'm here to meet my family." So this is where I belong. You don't, you know. And so then a principal came to see him, and asked him if he would come and talk to the students. And so he did, and he shared his story, and how he, uh, how, what caught, made him decide to want to find out who he is, and where does he belong, you know, and that encouraged the children wanting to know where they belong, you know, mm -hmm. and so I guess the band, uh, the band was there, the chief and counselor, or somebody was there anyway, and heard his story, then got a hold of the family, and I guess the family was waiting because they didn't know if they was real. That mm -hmm. was their yes. grandfather, their brother yeah. or sister or relative. And so I guess he they he went to meet them. And then they had a big feast for him. And then they told him who he was and, you know, and the, his mother. And this is wow. your uh, your dad. This is your brothers and your uncles. And, you know. and But the thing is, like, he did that whole circle, the circle of courage. Absolutely. Belonging, his independence. Then he experienced generosity from all the people and his generosity to share his story. And yeah. he mastered it. Like he didn't quit halfway. He completed his circle of courage. Good. Yeah. Oh. And so many people need to do that. What happened to him? Oh, he's, you don't mind. <laughs> oh, he's still in Vancouver. He works, That's amazing. He works for a, a he, he does a lot of youth groups wow. and he does a lot of sharing. Uh, and he has a wife, and yeah. and he is health, and he's tall, and you said he, he's so vibrant when he speaks, like he's, uh, the stage is here, but he ends up going out, and then he walks back and forth to all the kids, and he's, and he's so excited to share his story, and you're, you're like, you can't but follow him, and everywhere mm -hmm. he's going, and he my is. son has all that information, like, I'd like to see oh. him come here, and share his story of how he went out to find out who he is. Because especially yeah. there's so many, there's 7,000 in Alberta, 7,000 Aboriginal kids are in care. In that same boat. Right? In Alberta. Wow. 7,000. They say 67%, like... but how, what's the percentage? Nobody ever stopped to ask. And I asked, so what is 67%? At one time it was 87 Oh, my God. That's how many, and what happened, why it's gone so low is because so many of them aged out. But that's right. child, that's child care. Now there's adults. In that boat. Yeah. Wow. That are 18 to 24 that are still under social services. What information, materials, resources, what is necessary for that to happen? 
I've seen uh, a book from Alberta Health Education. They did come up with uh, a curriculum to bring to the schools in Alberta. And I've also seen one in BC. They're similar, but it's about BC. And this mm -hmm. one's about culture, Alberta. And I believe that it should be in every school and that they should. I know they are working on another curriculum. And, uh, but it need, and also the people that are servicing or working with Aboriginal people, they should know the culture. They should be taking that course. Because mm -hmm. how can you work with someone when you don't know who they are? You haven't had dinner with them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> the Asians, the Germans, That's the right. natives. That's right. You know, I they know, need that's... to know who they are. Right. You know, and like we weren't born yesterday or 200 years ago. We've yeah. been here. There's um, history has been found over 10, 20,000 years that we've been here. So yeah. they should get to know who we are. And it's not just the Hollywood movies that they need to know us. Yeah. So they need to sit with us and, you know, learn about us. And also the positives, because I asked so wow. many children, adults, can you give me one positive thing about that you know of Aboriginal people? Well, there's you, you know. There's well, you. no, I said there's more. So I've compiled the list that I bring to the youth, you mm -hmm. know, all the speakers, the the actors, the singers, mm -hmm. the the Canada's uh, the, uh, the top model. You know, right. she's from Sugar Creek. Yeah. And then there's the dancers. Canada's, mm. has, Canada's Got Talent. Yeah. And it was the Métis dancers that yeah, won. Yeah, that's true. You know, and so... Role models. Role models. And then the kids go, oh, you know. Yeah. And then I have some of their pictures, and right. I show them, eh? And they are so, like, wow. I said, you know, I didn't know you guys did that, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the different... Uh, there's an astronaut who's Aboriginal. Yeah. Hockey players, basketball players, right? You know, are Aboriginal, and people don't know that until you so the bring positives. it out. Yes, they because they're all they're so used to seeing the negatives. Like uh, we have a group here, uh, Shannon Dunfield, who took a group of Aboriginal kids to uh, oh, was it Toronto for the Indigenous Games, and they came home with gold and silver. And how far did that go? I don't know. If, I don't remember seeing it on Daily Herald. It was on I, Facebook. I didn't know. So um, they should be, you know, from lifted Alberta up. lifted up. You know, you hear about McDavid because he's having a bad day. He's pouting because his team's not backing him up or something. Oh, yeah, yeah you hear about that one. Yeah, you know, there are a but, lot of negatives. Yes, but let's have hear. some positives. Is there anything else that you would like to say around Indigenous education and best practices in your experience? All I can say is that is to keep the doors open. Like, it's not just it seems like every time we get a new government we get in uh there's a different trend that happens mm. uh, i remember 1977 78 they did have aboriginal teachings they'd have people come in and speak to the kids mm -hmm. and then that got that died off and then now in the past two three years it's been more and more and then but then if one Trudeau goes out, another government comes in, are we yeah. going to get another name? And then all of a sudden there'll be no teachings of the Aboriginal culture? Yeah, we'll get renamed again. We'll get and renamed <laughs> again, yes. Cause, well, yeah. You said you had 10 names ten in your names. lifetime, yes. 10 labels? 10 labels. Uh-huh, and you don't like Indigenous. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah. Because I don't know what we're going to be called the next government. Because before Trudeau was a conservative government, and they called us Aboriginal First Nation Métis and Inuit. Yeah. And then before that was Native, and before that was Bill C thirty one. Next, mm -hmm. next, you know, mm -hmm. status, non status, and yeah, a lot of labels. You know, lots of labels. Savage, Absolutely. Indian. Yeah. <laughs> the Cree. The Cree. Yeah. yeah. All kinds of things. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I, uh, 